All right, man. Peace. So, brothers, this is going to be another entry into the Toxic Femininity series. And, of course, it will be starring Mr. LeVar Ball and Mr. I mean, Miss Molly Karim Rose. And let me say this first off before we get the video started. There are so many people trying to make a huge deal about this situation. And it's very important that I implore brothers to once again understand that, as Donald Glover stated, this is America. <laughs> this is America. So you have to understand this is your new environment. This is the new atmosphere, especially when it comes to the relations or interactions between males and females. You always have to be on guard, especially in a so-called professional environment, a quote unquote corporate environment. And corporate America is just high school 2.0. The woman by nature is an agent of chaos and she will seek out chaos and anarchy whenever and wherever she can. So it will behoove the man or the male, whatever you are, to be as vigilant as possible. Even though a male will most likely not be vigilant, a male for the most part is going to fall into a lot of these traps. But when it comes to Mr. LeVar Ball, he is relatively free. He's liberated from the concept of the corporate world, which is Luciferian by nature. That's why he's like a blip in the matrix. He's someone who's kind of fallen through the cracks. And that's why we've seen other Luciferian advocates like Jamel Hill try to claim that LeVar Ball should no longer be allowed on TV. Isn't that interesting? She's supposed to be a freedom fighter, but she claims that LeVar Ball should not be allowed on TV for his alleged flirtation with Molly Karam, even though I'm sure that we can pull up a lot of old footage of both Jamel Hill and Molly Karam making sexually suggestive statements about men on their airwaves. I did a video a very long time ago, one of the early videos on my channel. I believe that it was around the time when they were talking about a female coach in the NBA. I believe that's what it was. It was Adam Silver wants a female coach in the NBA. So this was probably over two years ago. It was during the time when Jamel Hill and Michael Smith were still hosting SportsCenter. And they had three female sports analysts who were at that time under the employment of ESPN. One of them being Sarah Spain. I'm trying to remember who the other two were. It was two... Uh, middle-aged Caucasian women and prior to their segment of speaking about Adam Silver hiring a female coach or trying to get some of these owners to hire female coaches there was a segment about uh, the the retired quarterback of the Chicago Bears Jay Cutler and his wife Kristen Cavallari and what Jay Cutler's wife had done Kristen Cavallari she had taken a photo of his backside and all of those females on the set literally spent five minutes talking about Jay Cutler's backside while Michael Smith had his head down in shame and embarrassment. There was no talk about how that was insensitive to men, how they were sexualizing a man. They just went about their business. But right now we're living in a time period where many of these liberal females, these Luciferian females, they're feeling, they're feeling the toxicity within themselves and they have to expel it a certain way. I did a video a while back called, Are Liberal Women Obsessed With Sex? And as opposed to people understanding that Molly Karam came to the assumption that she came to when LeVar Ball made the statement that he made because she is consumed by sex and she's also consumed by self-worship. She's so accustomed to people telling her how attractive she is that she naturally assumes that when a man says that he's ready to switch gears with her, which was a statement that she herself made, that it must be that he's trying to come on to her despite the fact that LeVar Ball has always showed that not only is he a devoted husband, but that based on the choice that he made for a wife and a mother for his children, Molly Karam is not his type. LeVar Ball was on record as stating that he planned on having children with a woman who was an athlete and who was six feet tall or taller to ensure that his sons would be six foot five and up so that they could make it to the NBA. So why would he be trying to flirt with a quote unquote female on that show first take who's about five foot two and on a good day, has no hips, no ass, silicone breasts, and five layers of makeup on her face. That makes no sense whatsoever, none. Other than the fact that Molly Karam, who herself always throws herself at black men, believes that every black man wants her or is consumed with her, which is a phenomenon that's very common. Most non-black women who quote unquote date a lot of so-called black men believe that every black man likes them or every black man who they find attractive is supposed to reciprocate. So that's part of the toxicity of of many of these television shows today, especially when you have women interacting with black athletes. But we can go through a list of times that I've seen Molly Karam make sexually suggestive comments to black male athletes on that show, or even non-athletes like Michael B. Jordan or uh, 
boxers like Andre Ward and Anthony Joshua, so on and so forth. The list goes on and on. But anyway, they're going to talk about it, and I'm going to chime in. It seems as though LeVar is trying to put a curse on the LA Lakers franchise. I will say this, there is the potential for that situation to be combustible. Because as of right now, we look at the Lakers and we see LeBron and, and Anthony Davis. And they have two of the top ten players in the NBA, arguably two of the top five, depending on where you would rank them. Of course, they have their eyes out for another supplementary piece to go along with LeBron, Anthony Davis, and Kyle Kuzma. Supposedly, they want to bring along some of LeBron's former teammates from the Cleveland Cavaliers. This very quickly could become Cleveland Cavaliers, the L.A. version. And we know that the Cleveland Cavaliers, they went through their ups and downs during LeBron James' second tenure there. So we'll see. It could become a combustible situation. As of right now, they're one of the favorites to win the NBA championship in the 2019-2020 season. But I would agree with LeVar when he says that his son is in a better place for him. Uh Uh-huh. Welcome back to First Take. Molly and Max are in New York. Look who's sitting next to me. Now look at how happy Stephen A. Smith is to have LeVar Ball in studio with him. Why is that? Because LeVar Ball is a very important piece. He's a very important component, not just to ESPN, but also to Fox Sports 1. When he shows up in studio, it is an event because they know that he's going to tell them the truth. They know that. Once they move past the bluster about his sons and about himself, everything else that he states, especially when he puts a serious look on his face, is going to be the truth. They know it and everybody else knows it. Chime in in just a second, make no mistake about it, but the one and only LeVar Ball. And the unabashed truth at that. He's unafraid. And once again, that's an offshoot of him not being implemented within the corporate system and having the corporate mindset. The corporate world is pure Luciferianism. Homosexual over the heterosexual, woman over the man. All that quote-unquote equality that they speak about is in name only. The so-called black man is at the very bottom of this society, on the liberal side. On the conservative side, he does not even exist. The corporate world is strongly and staunchly liberal. So that's why I always state that the corporate world is not for the so-called black man. When you're not in that, in that zone, they cannot control you. Big baller brand, father of Lonzo and LaMelo and LiAngelo, not necessarily in that order, of course. Welcome to the show. How are you this morning? Hey man, I'm good. Happy to be here. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, I knew you'd say that, and I see you got that smile on your face. You got some explaining to do. <laughs> LeVar got that. <laughs> he, he got that golden smile on his face. Like I said, when his son first got drafted by the Lakers, you, you could tell that LeVar is a big Laker fan. Because his gums and his teeth match the Laker colors, purple and gold. <laughs> okay, let's get right into it, okay? First things first, the Lakers, because they traded your son. Yes. Career nine point, career ten point per game scorer. Average nine points last year. Yes. Shooting 40% from the field, 32% from three point range. That dude, because the Los Angeles Lakers don't have him. They'll never win a championship again. Explain never, yourself. Never, the floor is yours. Ever, ever. Explain it. I told you they let go of the best thing they had going for them. No. I told them, you get the ball, boys, you can survive this. Now you can't. But like I said before, these suckers, I'm playing chess. Y'all playing checkers. The best way to get Lonzo out of L.A. is I said, you know what? I don't like New Orleans. I don't like New Orleans. Lonzo ain't going nowhere. He's the best in the world. And Lakers, I like, will never let him go. First thing they do, exactly what I want to do, let him go. Because it's raggedy over there. I agree with him. It does appear to be a raggedy setup with the L.A. Lakers right now. They don't seem to know what the hell they're doing. Led by that airhead, dizzy broad, Jeannie Buss down Tatiana. That's, that's her new name. It's not Jeannie Buss. I realize that Buss is not her last name. That's her middle name. Her real last name is down Tatiana. Jeannie Buss down Tatiana. Then the, the writing is on the new shirt that he gonna wear. It said no L.A. on it. So you sitting here telling me that the reason why you said that Alonzo, you didn't want to be in New Orleans and that, you know what, he ain't going anywhere. He'll never get traded from the Lakers. Yes. Is because you wanted him traded from the Lakers? Exactly what I wanted to do. What, what, what? One of the best teams he gonna play on is New Orleans. Great. With him at the one, Aaron at the two, Ingram at the three, 
Zion at the four? Ingram with the Zoom. I agree with that. They're going to be a problem. They're going to be a problem. I'm not sure if they're going to re-sign Julius Randle. But don't be shocked. I'm not going to say that this is necessarily going to happen. But don't be shocked if 40 games into next season, the New Orleans Pelicans have a record somewhere around what the L.A. Lakers have. Don't be shocked by that. They're going to be a problem. They're going to be a team that um, if everything comes together for them like it should, I could see them winning 45 games next year. Wouldn't shock me at all. Except the five, you get my boy to run a team like they were going to run loose. Did you, wow. feel, did you feel that way before they acquired Zion? Oh, yes. Stop lying. Stop lying. I'm just that good. Stop lying. I'm that good. It's what? exactly what I want. Let's get I told them it was cold. I don't know if it's cold or hot over there in New Orleans. But I'll tell you one thing. They said, oh, you haters. Check this out. We got rid of Lonzo and LeVar. Guess what? I've been here before the Lakers. LeVar ain't going nowhere. Lonzo going to know them. But I still be in L.A., so you'll be able to see me. In all seriousness, talk to me about why you feel the way or felt the way that you felt about well, the Lakers. Well, the Lakers is all crashing down. Like I said before, they had to change the coach. They ended up changing the coach. Even if Lonzo would have stayed there, he's not going to have a great feeling on the fact that they didn't believe in him the first time. So now, don't come at him now talking about, oh, we're trying to win. We believe in you now. And beyond that, how can Lonzo Ball build anything with the L.A. Lakers when it's very obvious that they're a win-now team? That was never going to work. As soon as they brought LeBron James in, it was only a matter of time. And I said that from before LeBron officially started on that squad, that if they brought LeBron on, that the countdown was going to start for Lonzo Ball being traded off of that squad. Believe that. And it's just like, you know what? If you've got all these question marks, here's what I say. Lonzo has never been uh, a piece of puzzle that you put that you add. He's always been that piece. He's always been a leader. So he don't need people to mentor him and do this and all this. You need to let him do what he does, which is win. He know how to make every player good around him. They gonna say they gonna have a head. Before before I get to Max uh -huh. and Molly, I gotta ask you this question. You do understand the last year has been pretty rough for you. It hasn't been the greatest year. Lon excuse me, Lonzo has not been the player yet. That you that you said he would be. Excuse me, he has not yet. He has not yet. That's all I'm saying. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. They talk about Lonzo Ball like he's some 27 year old, seven year vet that has not panned out. This dude is like 20, 21 years old, man. He's a baby. Giving him and giving him the opportunity. The reason he started doing better last year because when everybody got hurt, you had to play him 35, 40 minutes. I said, do that from the beginning. If they would have played him and LeBron together for the whole duration in the beginning, they would have been winning and everything would have went fine. But when you start splitting them up and doing these things and the guy at the top don't know how to run the team, the coach, they don't know y'all. Like I said, they should have had magic coach. Your so, sons, LiAngelo, LaMelo, yes, yes. you pulled one out of college, you pulled one out of high school. That seemed to be a bit ridiculous and extreme, LaVar. Well, it was just reported last week that there was a high schooler who decided that he was not going to go to college, that he was going to go play in Australia. But it didn't make big news because he said it himself. He didn't have a black father who said that I'm going to take my son away from the college program and send him overseas to Australia or to China or to Europe to play for a couple of seasons. But because LeVar Ball decided that he was going to pull his son out of high school when everybody knows that high school was just an apprenticeship for LaMelo Ball to eventually make it to the NBA. It was a big deal and supposedly he was ruining his son's life. This is what all of the people who claim to be so concerned about the Ball Boys were saying on the internet and on social media that LaVar Ball was ruining their lives. All he did was give them a home to grow up in, a skill to have and to be able to monetize, and now they're more famous than they ever would have been. I wish that people were as concerned about these average kids growing up in these communities without a father in the home and don't know where the next meal is coming from and are not being taught anything as they are about LaVar Ball's sons. Then maybe our communities will be better and stronger. Ridiculous and extreme. You're pulling your son out of high school as a junior in high school. Because we don't do the normal road. Look how much better they are than everybody. Oh, yes. Wait, wait, wait. Where's the evidence? Go ahead. No. Where's the evidence? He's about to have a second son in the NBA. And I, I say this repeatedly, especially pertaining to Leangelo, or as he calls him, Jello Ball. Lavar has always stated that Leangelo was not going to make it to the NBA. So if Leangelo goes on to become an executive at the quote unquote Triple B company, What's the problem with that? You know how many of these stores in so many of these neighborhoods are family businesses where there'll be a man who opens up a store, say he's Arabic or East Indian or what have you, 
and they have their children work in the store during the summertime to eventually take over the store. Nobody says, how come you're not sending your children to college? And if the children do go to college, oftentimes it's to understand the business world better so that they can expand their, you know, their chain of stores. But because especially so-called black people have a slave mentality, don't have a ruling class mentality, they're always trying to tell people who are doing a good job how to do a better job as opposed to telling people who are doing a terrible job how to do just an average job. All of these parental experts on television will refuse to tell the sisterhood of Kali, a.k.a. the goddess of death, also known as the black matriarchy. None of these parental experts will tell them how to raise their children better because this society tells us that we have to worship the black matriarchy. But they love talking to people like LeVar Ball and telling him what he should be doing better. I actually agree Mexico. with you about a lot of your assessment about Lonzo. I think if he and LeBron had been playing together all year, in fact, when Lonzo got hurt, even when LeBron got back, they couldn't win. He is, exactly. and I, he's a precocious player. I believe he's going to be an all-star in the not-too-distant future. He's still just very young. And I agree, hasn't been given the whole chance. But two things I want you to address. One, he can't stay healthy either season. And two, how... Well, LeVar Ball has addressed that in the past. He's blamed that on the, on the Lakers training staff. And... Ironically, they have changed the training staff. Let him get to the NBA with a shot that jacked up. He's shooting under 50% from the line. Now that's more valid. LeVar definitely deserves to be blamed for, for why his sons, because both LaMelo and Lonzo have jacked up shooting form. Why they're shooting like that. LaMelo's going to have an issue as well because he, he throws up a shot put shot. I have no idea what that shot is. I'm saying he's shooting from the wrong shoulder. You got perfect form and you can't hit a free throw. You got perfect form. That's what I'm talking about. Don't worry about nobody's form. Worry about what they do. I am. You see him. If you brothers get the opportunity, you have to see when Max Kellerman tried to dribble the basketball around some cones back when he was on that other ESPN show. That was the most awkward and unathletic thing I've ever seen anyone do for a person who sits there all day talking about boxers and basketball players. This dude, Max Kellerman, has no athletic ability whatsoever none i mean he was moving around those cones like someone who had three left feet not just two it was embarrassing game and you say when you play against the spurs you gotta believe and let him do what he does levar and it's levar. knocking down shots when you're supposed to knock him down ain't no big deal look at uh that boy van fleet couldn't shoot to save his life but now at the end of this goddamn playoffs in the championship he shoot the lights out look at well, I have to stop LeVar there for a moment because the difference between Fred Van Fleet and his son Lonzo Ball is that Fred Van Fleet's shots just were not going in. His form was perfect. Lonzo's shots have no chance of going in because his form is terrible. Bang, bang. LeVar, sure. I, I agree with you about... He said bang, bang. <laughs> the bang must be the shot of the basketball bouncing off the back of the rim. I actually agree with you about you know most of your assessment NBA? about... About Lonzo, what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, how do you address his shot? He's, I'm talking you about what happens. He's not his going out. His fine. His shot is fine. Everybody. Then why is he shooting under fifty percent of the line? You're going. Then, then when he shoots the lights out in New, New Orleans, folks gonna be like, man, I knew he shoot. He's gonna have the same raggedy form with that ball going in in your face. <laughs> now I want to tell everybody when he's shooting on the other side. How, Molly? Go ahead. Go ahead Levar, before I, I get back to. Now, of course, this is going to be the moment where Molly Karam decides that she's been sexually assaulted verbally by LeVar Ball. So let's see how this transpires. LeVar, can I switch gears with you? for? Because I have a question you here. You can switch gears with me anytime. <laughs> let's stay oh, focused here. Go ahead. Yes, let's stay focused. You need to stay focused because it's very obvious that your thoughts went directly to the black man's penis. And brothers, I cannot make this point strongly enough. Women are far more sexual than men are. Women have sex on their minds far more than men do. It's far more a part of their identity than it is men. And this is why I always state when the woman tries to create this false narrative or concoct or perpetuate this false narrative that men have sexualized them, it's actually the opposite. Men have always gone to great lengths to desexualize the woman because the man is a creature of order. So he understands that in order to maintain the, the dynamic of the husband and the wife, the wife has to be desexualized so that it will not encourage the covetousness of other men to try to bring anarchy into the rapport between himself and his wife. So that's why the man has always made sure that the woman dressed with a with attire going down to her feet 
And, you know, in some cultures, women wear veils, so on and so forth. As soon as the woman was, quote unquote, liberated, the first thing that she did was embrace her sex goddess archetype, meaning show as much of her breasts and her ass as possible, wear clothes as tightly fitting as possible because they lead with their sex altar. You understand? Deep down, the woman knows that her mental capacity is not what's going to to uh, grant great gain to her in this society. She knows that she's going to have to lead with her sex and hope that because men or the viewing audience will fall under the allure of her sexual aspect, that maybe that will force them to listen to other things that she has to say. And Molly Karam is no different. All she is is another person on television posing, trying to lead with her sexual energy. Um. Now, brother, did you see how Molly Karam, <laughs> she closed her eyes and she had to try to see if she could compartmentalize how she believes that she was verbally sexually assaulted on air by LeVar Ball. When you dwell in a society like this that is based so much in optics and agendas, you always have to be cognizant of the women that are around you, whether it's in your workplace or in your personal life or whatever. Because the woman is a vessel by nature, she's a receiver by nature. That's why her sexual genitalia goes inside. She receives teachings far, far easier than men do. Men are far more likely to question things from the standpoint of rationale than the woman is. Therefore, the woman is far more easier to influence and therefore she has to be monitored more than men do. Both men and women have to be monitored to a degree, but the woman is just all over the place. And right now she's, she's in her own world. She's like, did this person really just say what he said to me? Did he really just put his hands on my breasts? Did he really just put his hand down the back of my pants like he's doing right now? Like she's, <laughs> her brain is going every which way right now just because of what LeVar Ball stated and what she inferred from it. Can you please explain to me what the biggest issue is? In your opinion, LeVar Ball's opinion, what is the... Now imagine if he responded to that by saying, of course I can explain to you what the biggest issue is. And she's like, are you talking about your penis? Oh my God. <laughs> You see how easy it is to play that game, brothers? Biggest issues with the Lakers right now. What's the biggest issue with the Lakers right now? They, they have no direction. They don't know which way they want to go. You don't know if you want to go with the young and let them grow. You don't know if you want to be a, a, a quick hitter and try to get all these all-stars together and win a championship like that. But if you, if, if, if you don't know what you want to do, you're going to be all over the place. And it starts at the top. Look, I'm so sure the Lakers. The direction at the top has got to have something. So is that so is that your way of blaming oh whatever God. your son hasn't done thus far in the NBA on the Los Angeles Lakers? Well, the Lakers certainly deserve a lot of blame for a lot of the issues that Alonzo Ball has gone through. They have not created the best environment for him to flourish. You have a 19-year-old point guard that joins your team, and the coach wants to play games with his minutes. He's not being physically trained properly and they're not running a real system. We know that, that Lonzo is a pass-first player. He's a pass-first player who's being asked to become a perimeter aspect of their offense because now he has to play in the LeBron James system. So like LeVar stated, they, they were not quite sure in what direction they were willing to go, but I have to disagree with them because with the trade, they pretty much declared where they're trying to go. They're a win-now team and they have to be because they have LeBron. The dude is 35 years old and the clock is ticking on LeBron James too. Right now, LeBron is like a sports car that's nearing the end of, of his mileage. You never know when, when those tires are gonna blow. We just saw it happen in KD. I'm just asking, I'm just asking. Nobody do what you want, it's your team. But I'm just telling you, the right things to do is the way I tell him to do it. And if you don't want to do it my way, try it your way and watch how I crash. Look, go ahead, Matt. I'm quite sure the Lakers wanted to hold on to Lonzo. If you talk to any smart executive around the league, they recognize he can be a really special player. He's just still very, very young, and he's already pretty good. But how, very, why do you get? I'm just curious. Why are you? Why are you so salty about a trick? Look at Molly's face. Molly's still upset, brothers. The main reason why she was so upset by what Lavar stated is because he's older and she does not find him attractive. I've mentioned this many times in previous videos. That's the reason why so many of those females out there in Hollywood were upset with Harvey Weinstein. It wasn't because of what he asked them to do to him or for him. It was because they were disgusted by his physical appearance. 
the woman is extremely carnal for the most part and and a two-dimensional thinker everything with them is about immediate gratification they're definitely about the visual and the carnal so i guarantee you had this been anthony joshua who was talking to molly karam she would not have responded in the way that she did to lavar ball that netted ad even you have to realize that ad is available see that's what you guys is, 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 is failed to mess up on like i said i'm very happy about the trade Believe it or not, I'm glad he's at New, New Orleans. He got a hell of a team over there. For sure. When you get a coach that's going to be behind you, I like Alvin Gentry. I like him. I'm Old trout mouth Alvin. Mm-hmm. Well, first of all, first of all, it's special to hear you actually say you like somebody. I think that's news in and of itself. Congratulations on it. I'm just saying, when it comes to basketball, you don't you don't seem to like anybody as much as you like you. But let me get to this. Let me tell you something. I don't even like you, but I like the fact that you talk crazy sometimes. That's why I'm over you. You actually do. I don't like you. actually do. I ain't listening to you. Here's the deal. Let me ask you this question. In all seriousness, let's get serious here. I'm very serious. Big ball of bread. Now, Stephen A. Smith said, let's get serious here. And LeVar Ball responded with, I'm serious all the time. So it's very obvious that when he engages in conversation with people, the first thing that he does is repeat the statement that they made in order to activate himself. That's a part of his conversational technique. And anybody who's from certain environments, we all know dudes like LeVar Ball. Whether he was in the barbershop or he was at the basketball court or he was sitting on a park bench or, or you knew him from the job or he was your uncle or what have you. He didn't mean anything by that. He's not going to come on television and say, uh, I want to switch gears with you, Molly Karam, because you're just you're just so unbelievably beautiful. I just want you so bad. I mean, once again, these people on television, they practice sorcery with that makeup. You have no idea what Molly Karam looks like in real life. You really don't. A lot of these people that cats think are so drop dead gorgeous that they always talk about Carrie Champion and Molly Karam and Joy Taylor. If you saw them walking down the street with no makeup on and just a, just a, a pair of sweats and some sneakers, you say, who the hell is that? That person looked like a ninja turtle. Who the hell is that? And somebody say, oh, that's Jamel Hill. You say, what? Jamel Hill? That bro look like Donatello. (laughs) Same thing with Molly Karam. I promise you, you take all that makeup off her face, take off that waist trainer that she wears to to first take every day to make herself look shapely, take off that push-up bra. It's a whole different story. I promise you that. She is nothing to be sought after. And once again, LeVar Ball has already shown that he's someone who plots and plans who he interacts with on that level. So I agree with him that from that standpoint, when he says that he's a chess player, once again, this dude said, I want to get with this woman and have children with her because she's six feet tall and an athlete. So what the hell would he want with Molly Karam? Talk to me. Alan Foster. Yes. $1.5 million yes. missing. Lonzo Ball, as a result, uh-huh. takes himself, his brother's. They go away from the big baller brand. They go to Nike. Your thoughts, how do you explain everything that has transpired and how well, it has made well, you look in a lot of people's eyes in light of what happened? It's the media. The media says that my boys have went to Nike and stopped doing this. That's where you get these perceptions right here. When they talking all this crazy stuff, they sitting at the table and I'm making them pancakes and strawberries and eggs. Y'all don't even know about that. Big baller brand is a family brand. Mm-hmm. Family ain't going nowhere. But your son was the one. But your son, I understand, he's he's going to always be your son. This is what the thing is. When I break it down to him and make him understand things, Mm -hmm. it's just like I told him. He said something on TV. He said, uh, Alan is like a second father. Mm -hmm. But when I make you realize, what do you call a second father? Your mama ain't no, uh, well, she's only been around four or five different men. I've been your only father. Now, let me ask you this. You made him realize, oh, I never should have said that. I said, has Alan ever picked you up from school? Ever took care of you when you were sick? Ever took you to the movies? Just because I might take you down to the jewelry shop don't mean it's your father. Mm-hmm. I'm the only one who gave you father. Now, did you say... Father. And let me say this before Stephen A. Smith asks his next question. And I've covered this, this concept or, you know, this understanding in other videos about LeVar Ball and his son and this notion that he's been such a terrible father and... What happened with the $1.5 million loss has created this irreparable fissure between himself and Lonzo. Better that Lonzo lose $1.5 million right now than be like Kevin Garnett or Tim Duncan and lose $80, $90 million to um, some so-called business manager. But they don't make topics about that on these television shows. I wonder why that is. 
you say this to yeah, Lonzo? I'm, Hold on, I'm, 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 I'm saying, did you say this to him before he went on Twitter, hashtag my own man, right. after he had pulled away from the big ball of bread? Or did you say it to him afterwards? He yeah, didn't pull away. Like I said, everybody in a hasty mood, you're going to talk crazy. It's just like, say if I slap you in your face, you're probably going to say, I'm going to kill him. But then you go home, you say, I can't kill the fuck, I'm going to jail for life then. Right. So, so in a hasty mode, yeah. when a quick mode, I'm like this when it happened. I said, you know what? The hell with Big Baller Brand. We're shutting everything down. Because I don't want Alan to be attached to nothing where he can say, oh, I helped him do that. And then I can't get no sleep. My wife can't get no sleep. And I said, you know what? Big Baller Brand is not Alan Foster. Yeah. That's, the, that's our family. Me and my wife thought of that before he even came in the picture. But just like I was so, at... So it's like, now he understands, like, you know what? Wait a minute, LeVar. How you here talking about your wife? I thought you wanted to have sex with Molly Carroll. Makes sense. Don't throw away something that you. Got. That's fair, but but again, we can go to the big ball brand, or we yes. can go to you taking Leangelo out of UCLA and obviously taking him overseas, why, why taking your son out of out of out of high school yes. as a junior. Yes. There are why people. I I, I'm done. I'm going to give you a chance okay. to answer that question. My question yes. to you is this: People look at the combination of all of those things, right. and they say, "What the hell is wrong with Lavar?" Is LeVar, has LeVar Ball over the last year reached a point where he thinks he's done anything wrong? I don't do nothing wrong as well. The point is this, though, Stephen, and of course I'm going to let LeVar answer, but life is about moving forward. So when Stephen A. Smith asked LeVar Ball, do you think that you've done anything wrong? Really what he wants LeVar Ball to do is go through this, this shaming ritual on national TV that they love to see so-called black men go through. And you no, know, we've seen this from Adrian Peterson to Ray Rice and so on and so forth. Whenever a so-called black man is accused of something, Reuben Foster, the assumption is that he did it. And whether he actually did it or not, the, the process and the protocol for their treatment is going to be the same. If you listen to ESPN or Fox Sports 1, you'd be forced to believe that there are no Caucasian male athletes that have any issues with money or with their wife or, or anything else, their decision making at all, because you don't see it on the national airwaves. But when it comes to these so-called black male athletes, especially, supposedly they're all supposed to admit that they're so wrong about everything. And that's why I always, not to digress, this is why I always try to address this, this um, concept of the quote unquote pro-blackness. Because the pro-blackness is just a component of Luciferianism. Black is not a race, it's not a history. It's not any of that. So when they have Black, Black History Month, they're really giving you Slave History Month. That's really what they're giving you. And post-slavery history month. In order for us to understand the reason why we get treated in the manner that we do, we have to be pro-truth, not pro-black. Because they reel you in with the pro-black shit so that they can get you as a, you know, as a favor to them for, ex for accepting you into their sphere, the quote-unquote liberal sphere. They say, black man, we feel sorry for you. You know, we know that you've been mistreated. We're going to welcome you in. But in return for that, we need you to espouse feminism and the uh, pro-homosexual, pro-lesbian agenda, as well as the pro-transgender agenda. So you, ha you have to do this for us in exchange for us welcoming you into our fold. That's how they trick and they trap the so-called black man. But those will be the same factions that want you on television every day. Whenever you're there, if you have a quote unquote misstep to state publicly that you're the worst person on the planet Earth. So hopefully the black man is in the process of coming to understand these things and why they want LeVar Ball to just admit that he's so wrong, even though he's a, a father who has raised three successful young sons. I go forward and do it. To me, I don't do nothing wrong because it's for me and my family. And that's why I said, Mel is going to be, watch me dance again. Okay. Number one pick, 2020. Because he's that good. He's that good. I can't wait for a team to say, you know what? I ain't gonna pick a six, eight point guard who's young, who puts seats, put people in the seats. I'm not gonna pick him number one. LeVar. I guarantee you, dude, because he that, that dude. He's going number one. That over. dude, number one. Well, according to the prognostications, he's gonna go at least, uh, or at worst, no lower than three. Right, let me ask you this before we go, because I know you're really excited about New Orleans. How do you think Lonzo is gonna help Zion's game? He's going to help Zion's game because Zion know what he's about. Zion knew him when he was young. He was talking about Lonzo. He seen this game. He know what he's about. So, so it's like Zo going to give him the ball and make him better than what he is. On the fact that he young, he like to run. Lonzo going to get him the ball early. He's ready to jump, catch lobs. And he's going to have a great time of having fun because Lonzo's infectious like that. I agree with that. I, think, young I agree with that as well. I think, I think that they're going to be a match made in heaven. 
Alonzo and um, Alonzo and Zion. That's going to be a great, great match. That's going to be very similar to Gary Payton and Sean Kemp. But they're going to get along because the core is so young. I, I'm not sure you're wrong about that. I do know this. I don't believe you when you say you wanted them in New Orleans all along oh, man, and you no, wanted them going yes, from L.A., yes, especially when you brought up the Phoenix Suns. Right I think you are lying. I said Phoenix Suns, why? Bottom of the list. Who want to go to Phoenix? Phoenix would have been a great place for, for Lonzo as well. But New Orleans is, I think, going to end up being even better for him. Put them there, boy. They did exactly what I wanted to do. Yeah. Right. I love it. New Orleans. Just got to fix that shot, LeVar. Just got to fix that shot. LeVar, we ain't got to fix the shot. Don't worry about it. We ain't got to fix the shot. Go in. No other shame shoulder. in your game. Other shoulder. No LeVar, shame in your game. LeVar, you're going to be in the French eating beignets or we'll however you, you pronounce those things, but they're good. What's up? You said that. I'll find something with sweets out there. Yeah. Oh, be careful, LeVar. Don't say that you're going to find something with sweets after Molly Karam said what she said. She might think that you're talking about her vagina. Make it All-Star. All-Star, you better be. It'll be All-Star next year. Don't worry about it. Yeah, All-Star next year. We're looking for you. Hey, plus CT, you're guaranteed. All right. Molly told LeVar to stay out of trouble. How did he get in trouble? But anyway, brothers, that's basically it on that. Once again, this is really much ado about nothing. ESPN is trying to create this... Um, this narrative about how they've suspended LeVar. I don't know how you could suspend someone who's not working for you, as he himself stated in his response to that, to that false notion. By the time the, the New Orleans Pelicans play the Lakers for the first time, it'll probably be in December or January, which would be the time that they would want to speak to LeVar Ball again. And they will speak to him again when the New Orleans Pelicans face the L.A. Lakers because there are just going to be so many storylines just between those two teams. You have Zion and LeBron, Zion being the new LeBron. You have the big trade between the teams. You have the storyline about Zion claiming that he asked Anthony Davis for an autograph and Anthony Davis turned him down. Like, there's just so much going on there. Of course, they're going to speak to LeVar Ball. But anyway, peace.